Good evening, dear televiewers. You are welcome to a brand new edition of Theory 60 Degrees. In this edition of the program, we have so much entertainment and information in store for you. But we would like to start your evening with this wonderful quote from the great African writer Chinua Achebe, which goes, The world is like a mask dancing. The world is like a mask dancing. If you want to see it well, you do not stand in one place. Of course, that should mean we should understand situations from different perspectives. That's when we get a better hold on understanding knowledge. Thank you for joining us uh, again and we have a lot in store for you. Coming up on Spotlight, we'll be discussing the role of a girlfriend based on comments made by Gambian Ghanaian actress Princess Shingle on Women's Day. Those comments were mind-blowing. And of course, Coop today focuses on Juventus Atletico Madrid. It's the return of the Champions League. Is Ronaldo going to sail Juventus through the tough challenge of scoring three without reply against Atletico Madrid? And on stages today, we review Canada 2019 with special focus on our English-speaking performance. And of course, on talking point today, we have a very interesting young man. He goes by the name of Tams Ferdinand. We shall be discussing with him youth purpose, inspiration, and development of capacities. That's what is coming up, but there's lots more added to this. Just stay with us after the jingle. Welcome back on set. If you are just joining us from wherever you are in Cameroon and beyond, then you are the right place for information and entertainment with a group of young minds to give it to you very hot. Well, our first segment, as you may have seen on the jingle, is Spotlight. And Spotlight today, we have two ladies to talk that through with us. Sandra, good evening. Hi, Adi. Always a pleasure. Same here. <laughs> Patience, welcome back. Hello, Adi. Thank have you. you been? I've been good. Thank okay. God. Uh, yeah, we really thank God, but some may say we don't thank God for comments made of recent by <laughs> Princess Shingo. You'll be talking us through. Of course, I'm going to be talking about the Gambian Ghanaian actress. She's Gambian, but she acts, she acts with um, the Ghanaian industry. Her name is, she goes by the name Prince, Princess Shingo. She recently went on social media, Instagram to be precise, and she speaks against her boyfriend. We will commonly say blast. She blasts her boyfriend, calling him an idiot, calling him a donkey. But um, just just for the fact that he asked her to cook for her, to cook Nigerian dishes for her, to cook continental dishes, to cook um, for him. I beg your pardon, to cook Nigerian dishes, um, continental dishes for him. And she say she she goes for that to say that just because the boy buys her gifts and she receives, which is okay, doesn't guarantee the fact that she is supposed to go into cooking for him and doing house and doing house chores for him because she says she's not her boy. She's not uh, her her mom or her house help to be rendering those services for for him and you can imagine the day she picks to to send for to put for that message on instagram she picks women's day <laughs> she, i don't know if she was trying to send to prove a point or to send out a message that day for other ladies but that is that is the news that has been on on instagram which um prince princess shingle made wow quite stunning there and i must say that this rejuvenates the whole debate surrounding the role of a girlfriend we will not go up to fiance or wife but the role of a girlfriend do you buy into what princess is saying that <laughs> ah, that makes me laugh because i think uh, maybe we we'll look at it like it's a tone in which she said it but to me oh sometimes we need to reawaken the men <laughs> yeah it so I, I, are you saying point blank that you, you, you shouldn't wash or cook for, for your boyfriend if you have one? Why not? You, you, you can do that, but I think, I think that um, what uh, the uh, princess... Shingle. 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 Yeah. I think it's complicated. <laughs> what she said on there is not... The day she chooses to say this is not only about the activity, but it's a way of also empowering the woman because yeah. I think that 
on a day like that, we celebrate women, and it's, it's bringing the women out of their shell. It's not just about telling the man, no, I can't do this, because if they have been to, into a relationship for this long, I think she has been doing that, but we should ask ourselves, why did she decide to do it on this day? I think a woman should be treated right, so it's not like she, she doesn't do that out of the ordinary, but those things, to me, I see like a form of inspiration to other women, because men have taken it like, uh, right. like a right that that is where a woman's place is supposed to, to be. be so I think she's trying to empower the woman well, well, not cutting you short well, when you say men have taken as a right don't you think it's it's but natural that women should do certain things like cooking washing let's forget the fact that some people are saying it's a right don't you think it's natural women should do so, such things? <laughs> That's because the society has made it natural. Yes, it's 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 okay for a girl to have a girl to cook for her boyfriend and wash dishes and all that. But with the way men are, are doing it these days, just because she she he he buys her, he might have taken it as because she buys her expensive gifts and all that. So he expects. I don't think Princess Shingo will just go out there on Instagram. If he had probably put it in a polite manner, or probably he's trying to impose it on her, that it's, she is supposed to do that in a relationship, but it's not, it's not a right, not not at that level. Yeah. Well, um, uh, some people try to gather that maybe uh, he was just excited having the lady in in his life, and uh, he just wanted the lady to do those things, maybe <laughs> cook for his friends and, when they come around for weekends. And the point is that sometimes um, men do these things on their own, but once they have a girlfriend, they feel like, okay, it's yeah. a relief. You, can do, you, you have to do all, all the work. You have to clean my house. You have to cook for me. You have to cook for my mom. You have to cook for everybody. No. There are things that you do on your own, but the moment you have a girlfriend, you begin to shift your responsibilities to them. Exactly. That's very interesting. So, so um, you, uh, what can we say should be done by a girlfriend, or how do we divide the roles? What should be done, what should not be done? Let it be out of her will to do what she wants to do for you in the relationship. If she decides to cook for you, if she decides to clean for you, and do all those other jobs, it should be out of her will. Don't impose it on her. Don't make it seem as if... That is that is that is because the life has defined the way relationships are supposed to be. Like the man is supposed to probably provide or buy her gifts and all that, and the woman is just there to clean and all that. No, it's because of the, it's because of the way life has put it. But it should be out of her, her will. She should do it because she wants to, not because it's being imposed on her. I think if she did it willingly, she would not go on air or on social media to put it that way. And and the, another thing, the way she sounds like. She has actually given the boy a chance. She's, she's like, you ask me out and I accept you. Like, it's a boy. <laughs> if the boy has been asking her out for a, quite a long time and then she the accepts she you, then she yes, says yes, bam. I think boy. what fascinates me too in that story is that she spoke of the fact that the boy offers her gifts, gifts. and all that. Yeah. But then the only uh, place where we try to see what she too should bring into the relationship, she fails no. by refusing <laughs> to cook uh, and clean. Are you trying to say that the gifts are a form of bribery? Not bribery, but at least that uh, it, well it constitutes the role the, the boy plays in the relationship. <laughs> she could as well offer gifts to the man. She did not. I don't think. I don't think in a relationship only the men do offer gifts. It's true where you're, you're asking a woman, you need to give her those things that will cajo. If you're asking her out, you need to give her those things that will cajo her and to make. You need to raise your palmares. Even the Bible says it there. Eh? We normally say we normally say it so that you can you can get the points. You don't just go about. Uh, sometimes they, they get the women refuse the men because we term the stingy men. It's not because <laughs> it's not because we really want those things, but we feel like some things should be done by men. Well, I think the the the, the topic is really a debatable one, and we can talk and talk and talk. But uh, just to close it up. What do you think a boy should do and a girl should shouldn't do or should do in a relationship? A boy friend girlfriend relationship. I can draw a advice a girl from uh, let's say a neutral, a very polite, good perspective. What will you advise a young lady get into a, a relationship with a boyfriend? Would you advise her to cook, wash? <laughs> I can't draw a line as to defining what a woman should do in a relationship or a man should do. But I think there should be some level of mutual understanding. Exactly. It's not all the time that the woman should be in the kitchen. It's not all the time that the man should be the one offering the gifts. They should make it in a way that at some point if the man is up, 
the woman should be down. At some point, the woman is up, the man is down, and that gives life a balance. It should not just be that your place is in the kitchen, I buy the gifts, you cook the food, I buy the food, you cook it, I pay the bills, you wash the sheets. No. Because before getting into a relationship, you have a life. So you're bringing your two lives to make it compatible. Yeah. Wow, thank you a lot. And patience, would you really have a free conscience visiting a boyfriend if, if you have one and then you see him cooking and you lay on the bed with your phone? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not going to have a free conscience. But I think... I, uh, 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 <laughs> I, 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 don't know I, I don't know if I should say it. Given the fact that patience is married, I think she, she can have a better uh, way of advising That's true. Young That's true. So <laughs> what advice? As to how she got to that level. <laughs> That's so, were you cooking, washing before you got to the level? <laughs> um, yes, I was cooking, I was washing, but it was out of my will. I did it when I want to. It's not he did not he, my husband did not make it that the, then my boyfriend he did not make it an obligation that he before I came to life he was washing his dresses, he was cooking for himself. So I decide if I would decide I decided okay. if I want to go and cook. Okay. So, Last question: Was there any time? That uh, you felt capable of doing it, but then you just say, I will not do it this time. Of or course. the only times you didn't do it, maybe you were feeling ill or something. No, there were so many times that I know that I'm supposed to, but I don't do it. So okay, that you should not take it, it. Yeah, let him do it. It's not, it's not, you should take it as okay. a right. Let I him guess do the, it. the young girls out there have had the perfect <laughs> advice now. Yeah, you don't, yeah. <laughs> if I should add, if I should add, I think um, if you have the opportunity to do it, do it. Do it. It makes for wow. it might add wow. it might add a little spice to your relationship and exactly the man and everything might, is down to you. Yeah, exactly. And well. the man might hold you in some esteem. Well, we have an empty <laughs> message here just to remind you that uh, when you send messages, try to write your names at the bottom of those messages and you can interact as the show is continuing. Well, this was just our first bus stop. Next stop we are talking UEFA Champions League. But it is time to talk scoop football and it's the return of prime football competition club competition the uefa champions league and we are paying special focus to the clash in turin in the alliance stadium in turin where the old lady takes on the matras makers the cultureros it's christian ronaldo against antoine griezmann adamu shaibu is here to talk us through the action good evening good evening how are you doing i'm okay and you I'm fine. You're putting on a red tie. Maybe you're sporting Atletico Madrid. No, you know, um, uh, my club is out of the competition, so now <laughs> I need to sit and watch football. You are humbled now. Yeah, I'm down to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Daniel, good evening. Good evening. How are you doing? Quite good. And okay. you? Uh, I'm doing okay. Looking forward to tomorrow's action. Shaibu, you talk us through the action. Yes, uh, Adi Divine, the UEFA Champions League is back again, like we said last week. Lots and lots of, lots of and lots of disappointments we saw, like the UEFA champion or the World Cup championess in club football is concerned, was dumped out of this competition by Ajax. Ajax came right in the backyard of 
parents are called to send them back home by four goes to one, telling them that this is enough. Four times in a row cannot be. But then it is surely a lot of lesson to be learned as Manchester City comes again to lock horns against Schalke. They know that they had a 3-2 victory out there in Germany. This time around, they have to fight back and see how to make it through. But a lot of expectation this time around will be in Turin when, when, there is, when the, the champion himself, Cristiano Ronaldo, lock horns against Atletico Madrid. Remember, Atletico Madrid is a team that he knows very well. Last year, in two legs, he scored six goals to say, Atletico Madrid, this is your turn to go home. But then, Atletico Madrid themselves, they know how to block him. In two of the four legs, he left the pitch without scoring any goal. Maybe this time around, he have to bring back that reputation I mean, and score for the Turing. But then, it is surely his own turn too to tell the world whether he was that star that gave all the UEFA Champions League to Real Madrid, or maybe it is just Real Madrid that was fighting and the luck is over. Surely, that's the time shall tell, Adi. Of course, time shall tell. Daniel, does it fascinate you to hear that uh, some players in Real Madrid come and supporting Atletico Madrid, the one Ronaldo to be dumped out? Um, Adi, I think they are doing this as a sign of revenge or as a sign of anger, saying he left them and now they are in, they are facing doom. Okay, and uh, what what are Juventus's prospects of going through? We know they need to score three without conceding. Yes, Adi, Atletico Madrid are a European giant. They have proven their worth. They have proven how good they are, and I think it's going to be a very tough match. I cannot say who is actually going to carry the day, but as you know, football is, is, is the way it is, and at any time, anything can happen. That's right, Shaibu, it fascinates us, uh, it impresses us to know that the last three players who have scored hat-tricks against Atletico Madrid, we have one, Cristiano Ronaldo, two, Cristiano Ronaldo, three, Cristiano Ronaldo. So is that some signal that he can pull it off? Um, yes, Adi Divine, you know, if there is one person who can decide the leg tomorrow, uh, it is Cristiano Ronaldo and no one else. And it is time for us to see whether that Ronaldo we know is still around or maybe he is now 34 and he's gone. We know that uh, many critics have been saying that Ronaldo is uh, more than his, his, uh, maybe he's 34 and he cannot do. And I think tomorrow it is time to prove. Maybe he might not carry uh, Juventus to the last eight. He might not even score two or three goals, but his performance alone, I think, matters tomorrow. Wow, and uh, do you think that uh, previous results like uh, Manchester United overturning a deficit in Paris and of course uh, Porto beating Rome after losing the first leg and of course um, Ajax. Ajax pulling it off against Real Madrid in the Santiago Bernabeu, do you think those results will make Cholo Simeone the coach of Atletico to say, hey, we thought that this 2-0 was so big a score, but listen, we are going there to play for our lives. Yes, I did, but I believe that the scores of last week are not a good news for the fans of Juventus because uh, I think it's like an alarm. Uh, to give a call back to Atletico that it is enough is enough. Remember last year these things happened. It happens before time and the fans of Real Madrid were, were, were saying that 3-0 in Bernabeu cannot happen against Juventus. But when Juventus arrived, the 3-0 was there up to the 90th minute. So I believe that it is time for Atletico to say no. It is We have to go and play. Remember Atletico Madrid in the first half, they played a defensive football meaning that they don't want to conceive a goal at home. And they ended up winning two goals to zero. So I, don't, I believe they might be going for another defensive, but should in case they try to attack, then I believe that they will, they will have themselves to blame. Wow. And uh, Morata, what, what, what can you say of his performance so far with Atletico Madrid? He has been doing quite good. Meanwhile, he was so criticized in England. Yes, uh, the, the coach, Diego Simeone, has given him a chance to be able to express himself. And, you know, he's no longer in England where he was being criticized day in, day out. And coming back to his childhood dream club, it's an amazing opportunity for him to shine again. Wow. So but if... I have another view. Remember his arrival in, uh, in Chelsea. Look at his performance of the first five or ten matches. Okay. People were saying that this is a superman and Zidane made a, a huge error allowing this guy to go. And I remember he defeated Manchester United alone, one of the matches. One goal to zero, a, a powerful heading. And people expected uh, this man to come and become that shiny star that Premier League have lacked for, for, for seasons. But unfortunately, after the, uh, two or three months, he became uh, that other players that can watch always from, uh, from, uh, from the bench, because maybe due to injury and so on. So I believe that it is that star that comes up 
and later on go away. He can score goals tomorrow. He can even make Atletico qualify. But I don't believe I still need to. He still need to win my trust. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you had to pick one player for the match tomorrow, who is going to decide the tie? One on the side of Juventus, another on the side of Atletico. Make your pick. On the side of Juventus, I'll. I'm a Barca fan, but I'll go for the Portuguese golden boy, Cristiano Ronaldo. And on the side of Atletico Madrid, I'll go for Griezmann. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, you know, Ronaldo is always there. We always think of Ronaldo. Uh, but I think I'll pick, uh, um, for, 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 normally for, Juve, for Juventus, I'll take Ronaldo. But for Atletico Madrid, I'll pick Oblank. Yeah, Oblank. Oblank, I think he would decide whether to save the goals from Ronaldo or to allow them. <laughs> <laughs> this man is so sure that Ronaldo will have so many shots on target. Well, you've chosen your guys, gentlemen. Score, prediction? One not in favor of Atletico Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> 2-0 in favor of Juventus. So prolongation and, and who wins? Will go through. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, if you are uh, trying to put money on uh, Juventus or Atletico Madrid, this football pundit here have certainly given you a limelight into what you can expect for the great action tomorrow. It's a great day for two giants of European football. Remember, these two teams have lost four of the last five finals. Juventus lost 2015 finals. Atletico Madrid lost 2016 finals. Juventus lost um, 2017 finals. Um, uh, Atletico Madrid. 2014 and so these two teams have shared four of the last five finals on the losing side it's so terrible we would like to see one of them crowned of course so um, uh, that's it we can only talk but then the reaction will take place on the turf so after the break the show continues with stagist thank you Shaibu. you're welcome <laughs> always a pleasure Welcome back on board. The show is so heated, so interesting today, and we have so much still ahead that you can expect to give your evening a blissful touch. Well, at this moment, we are talking stages, and what else can we focus on on stages today other than uh, Canal Door Act Do's? The 12th edition of the most prestigious award in Cameroon, Canal Door, chaired by the First Lady herself, Madame Chantal Bia. Well, Fritz, you talk us through Canal Door. Good evening. Good evening. You're Andy. putting on black today. Did an artist you thought would win lose? Um, the black is not for the artist, it's for the recent accident that happened in Ethiopia. Okay, that's so thoughtful of you. And everybody is putting on black, it's like we yeah, planted it. Oh, I didn't plan it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not especially for the costumes. The oh, they are so okay. beautiful, I saw their picture. Wow. Uh, life is all vanity. But I didn't plan mine. Well, I joined now, Ethiopia, <laughs> may your souls rest in peace. Amen. All those who died. Amen. So, uh, you talk us through Canal Door. Yes, uh, the Canal Door Award for 2019 has come and passed, and it has left the atmosphere a funky one. And we can't talk about it without talking about those that won the awards and the different types of awards. Um, we have an award that was given specially to uh, Salatiel, the CEO of Alpha Beta Records, for the good work he has been doing for the industry. Adi, we all know that the hit songs of most of the Cameroonian artists have been produced by Salatiel. So he was given a big shout out for the work he's been doing. Wow, I think that uh, Salatiel is he's really a baobab in the industry. Yeah. And uh, the, the MC that night kept on describing him as this selfless fellow. Yeah, he has held the hands of many, many, many who came after him. Okay. And if you listen to Trace Africa, most of their songs, Mr. Leo, the Mr. Leos, and others, you always hear 
Alpha Beta Records. And Salah Sierra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the beats. Wow. So, uh, just about Salah he even made a speech saying that uh, what will bring the Cameroon industry to the uh, to the top is unity. Oh, cool. So, he's really a selfless guy. Uh, another person that won is Cindy Emade, who won the Best Actress. Of okay, the year. Best Actress of the of Year. The year. <laughs> then, uh, Mr. Liu won the Best Urban Artist. Yeah. In Kang Stevens, we take another shot. <laughs> <laughs> Best director. Best director. Uh, we have Musti Charismatic. He took the best comedian. Fali Ipupa won the best African artist. We have Daphne, who was like uh, the queen of the, the night. Queen of the night. She won many trophies. It was like the night was for her. She won the best urban female artist. She won uh, the best female artist, and she won the best uh, digital performance, performance of the year of the with year. 54 million following yeah. on social on networks. Social networks, and uh, the day was crowned by Yema. If you all know him, you know his look. Uh, you know his logo, Yema, and that is no other person but Loco Xiaomi. Wow, and uh, he was crowned the best male artist of the year. But since our audience is principally English speaking, we'll focus on the Anglophone performances. Yeah, and and um, I have a feeling that the Anglophones are taking over the Cameroon industry. Um, I think the support system is getting higher back in our regions, and it's not, even though we still have this, this language issue, let me put yeah. it that way, that we, we, we can't go all English, we must bring a little bit of French in it because. I sometimes when I sit back and I try to analyze it, I look at it like the mbokorism, <laughs> like, <laughs> like the way Jovi sings makes music a, a lot more fun. And I really appreciate the, the, the artists because they are so much drifting away from the Nigerian, Nigerian style. It's good, it's true, we have learned from them and we are trying to incorporate our own our own styles, our own pigeon and our own confrangle that can can boost the, the industry. And I, I while he was going through that I was looking at best male urban music artists or group, Mr. Okay, Leo. Mr. Wow. Wow. That was uh, Mr. Leo and we have a uh, Best Central African artists, Roga Roga from Congo. We had a whole lot of them. And then we have special prizes that were given to Salatier, Ben Deka, Toto Gilum, Elvis Kemayo. Wow. Those were special prizes that were given to them during the the canal door and it was because they have been in the industry and they have been they have been been there they have been there and to, sharing their yeah, and share, yeah and uh, motivating those that are coming behind them so they had special uh, special prizes and they said the most popular song was Kale by Daphne and the best artist was Luke. Wow, wow quite an impressive night but if you were to pick one moment during the night which make you made you really stunned and wow was like wow which moment will you pick well i think i, I felt so touched when cindy emade was was giving the award <laughs> <laughs> yeah she 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 is a, a a very great actress of she course she's a great actress and i think with the way she just stormed the industry and she kept going from strength to strength there was no time she really what makes her stand out is it just her look or what, why so I much hype it's, around it's her just about her look I've, I've had the opportunity to see a lot of films where she featured it and then this uh, uh opera on this soap opera on crtv okay uh, black angel or something like that i think i admire the way she she acts most especially, I admire the way she talks. Wow, she's yeah. soft spoken. I, I like her, yeah, and, and I like her, her use of the English language. Oh, so much about Cindy already. <laughs> if you were to pick one moment during the evening, what would you pick? Uh, I think the moment I enjoyed most is the the time when uh, Mr. Dr. Ngeng Stevens mm -hmm. took out he took out his phone. Oh, this <laughs> man! He just <laughs> lost a bottle of beer. <laughs> and said, I mean. Okay, she, yeah, and phone. said we take another shot. <laughs> I, I, I really loved it. Then my beer is not going, although that's a wonderful moment. <laughs> I thought you would say, Nyang gonna do suit. I mean, I, 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 I suspected that is what you were asking for, but I'm talking about mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a, uh, there's so much to talk about, Canada. Congrats to Daphne. 
Queen Kale, and uh, we'll certainly be re revisiting Canada in the weeks to come. But it's time for us to move to our talking point as the show draws to a slow, 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 slow end, but a very, very interesting one. After the break, just stay with us. Back. It is a final segment of the show, but a very interesting one. And of course, we have a guest in the house today. He goes by the name of Mr. Tam, Mr. Tam Ferdinand. And he is a very enterprising, very dynamic Cameroonian. The Cameroonians that the head of state with his vision 2035 encourages us to mimic in our daily lives. Mr. Tam Ferdinand, good evening. Good evening, Divine. How are you doing? I'm doing good, and you? Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. I like the positive energy you're already uh, installing around here. Of course, I'm, already, I'm always full of positive energy, and that's what I do. Wow. Motivating, inspiring, and empowering, so I ought to carry that positive energy. Wow. So at the end of this show, of course, I'll be a better at it, Divine. Of course. You'll be inspired <laughs> and empowered. Wow, thank you very much. Daniel, you join us again? Yes, I did. So um, uh, today we are focusing on uh, inspiring young people, giving them a purpose, giving them direction professionally, and of course instilling professional capacities in them. You have something to tell us about that? Yes, uh, the, the focus is on professionalization in the domain of secondary education. Yeah, primary. focus with secondary school students. Yes, uh, the, I'm out here to list the advantages of professionalizing secondary school education. Okay. The first, we have the advantage of innovation. Okay. When secondary school education is being professionalized, there's innovation where you can see the next, maybe the next Steve Jobs, the next Mark Zuckerberg, we, who might come up someday maybe with building our own Cameroonian Facebook. Yeah. And we also have Kicking out the question of what we like to after secondary school education. Wow. Because that is one of the most difficult moments of the lives of students. When they get to decide. When they well, get to because decide. of time, um, uh, I guess we'll just go to Mr. Tams uh, Ferdinand, uh, who is going to talk us through. You have uh, an NGO that you've put in place to empower or to follow in the vision that uh, Daniel has introduced us to. So, what is the name of this NGO? Yes, the name of the NGO is Chris Dev, Center for Research and Community Empowerment for Chris. Chris Dev, that's the Chris Dev. that's the abbreviation. Okay. Center for Research and Community Empowerment for Sustainable Development. Okay. So, what is the principal goal? The main goal of uh, the NGO, the nonprofit organization, is to empower communities to become actors of their own development okay. through evidence-based research, education, advocacy sensitization and awareness and um, information sharing programs. That's quite impressive. And uh, when I get that, it's a whole lot of work. For how long have you been operating now? Actually, uh, uh, we have been operating since uh, October 2018. So it's just about, I think, five months now. OK. Yes. And in these five months, uh, can it be fair for us to ask you what you've achieved? Of course, it, uh, I've, I've, uh, we've gotten some achievements so far. Uh, it, because I've also tied the, 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 the NGO, the non-profit organization, to my research work because I'm currently writing my, my dissertation on teenage pregnancy. So it's part of the objectives of the, the NGO to eradicate the teenage pregnancy. So I was in the West region of Cameroon in, in some rural localities where I organized sensitization programs, education programs. I was and about to ask you before programs. you continue, what's your target population? Is it just every woman or uh, you, you, you focus with students or you focus with 
what uh, tribe in particular is it just everybody actually it depends on the program for now we have three programs running there's one for the for teenage girls fighting teenage pregnancy there's the other one for parents okay. redeeming the relationship between parents and their children and there's the other one for youth in general motivating inspiring them and empowering them to discover their god-given talents their skills their abilities in order to be able to tap into their hidden potential and unlock it and reveal it to the world That's because great. everybody has some potential in them which the society turns most attempts to push us into employment Whereas we have hidden potentials in us. What about those who are not really good in schools? What about the youths who cannot really have the best grades, who can't make it into the public schools the, through the public exams? Does it mean they'll be lost in the society? So we encourage them, we empower them, we inspire them to look inside of them, to go into a, a self-discovery process. And I'm, I'm about to ask, is it just about talking or you actually have people who are part of this NGO who are specialists in various domains to really instill feasible capabilities in these people? For now, I'm still building a team. Okay. But uh, let's say uh, there's, there's a program I have with a secondary school a motivation and inspiring program so okay. I invite experts to talk to them on various topics there's some there's some young students who want to be, maybe become lawyers and they want to know what it takes to get into the legal career okay I just form a network I have I have friends who are lawyers I can call a lawyer or a legal expert to come talk to them on that particular topic so I have a network I invite any any expert to depending on the demand on, of the students wow. I have to talk to. Wow, so what has been the response on the field? You tell me you've been to the West region, where were you particularly? I was particularly in Baleng, okay. that, uh, that's in Bafusam, in the Bafusam 2 uh, subdivision. I, 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 I visited three schools, the Lycée de Baleng okay. and two other private schools where I had sessions with these young girls. I shared questionnaires to them. They filled the questionnaires so I could assess their, their perceptions, their, their, their beliefs and their attitudes towards teenage pregnancy. Okay. So I knew the kind of topic I needed to, 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 to conceive for them. So I knew the point of discussion and I knew the points to target during my sessions with them. Wow, impressive. We take this message from one of our viewers. He says, hi, I'm enjoying the program from JP Meleng. But one thing is missing, the absence of live videos or pictures of what you people are discussing, making it um, more of a, a listening affair, just at um, just that and all will be 100% fine. Um, this is from Alphonse, Barry and Billy. Thank you very much for your comments. We usually have videos and pictures, just that today we had a little technical difficulty, but that will be rectified in subsequent shows. So uh, it's quite selfless to see a young Cameroonian like this. Uh, do you work with just your budget or you have aid coming in? For now, I'm working with just my budget. I'm wow. still I'm still hoping for it to come. So, but for now, I understand. I, I don't have to just wait for it to come. I deal with what I have. I deal with the resources I have. I'm trying to give out what I have. I want to first of all volunteer what I have before the aid comes. If we wow. keep waiting for aid, always. If we keep waiting for the leaders, we, we, we may like, not never. Like Mother Teresa said, don't wait for the leaders. Go wow. out. Do it alone. If you can, if you can't feed a hundred. Just feed one. Start always with what you have. Exactly. So that's what I'm working on now. Wow. And like um, uh, my CNN colleague, uh, Richard Quest, usually says, it's not about the number of pennies you have. It's what you do with it that counts. What's your impression about uh, what uh, Ferdinand is up to? I think it's incredible. Like former U.S. President Barack Obama says, we are the change that we seek. So change starts from us before the world can follow. And I think what Mr. Tam President is doing is something that many of us out there should support him and like join him to make this change. Wow. So um, uh, what, what are we looking up to in the weeks or months to come? Okay. For now, what, what we're looking up to is we're preparing a particular training module that will be implemented in schools. Yes. So because we know apart from the 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 program taught in school young students need to discover themselves they need to go into a self-discovery journey they need to discover their purpose okay. what they're gifted in what they're what they're really carrying what they really carry inside of them so, so we're developing specific, okay yes we're developing a self-help 
program. Okay, it's a, a dead self fish for it already. No, no dead yet. I'm working in. I'm working on it with my team right okay. now. So we're we already we're already having a prototype school where we're implementing it. So at the end of this academic year, we'll fully have the module developed and the training okay. developed. Wow, Theory Sixty Degrees is open for young people who are enterprising, who are helping society to grow. And anytime you're welcome here, maybe you just give uh, those who are watching maybe your Facebook social media address. My my Facebook address is Tams Ferdinand. You can just type Tams Ferdinand on your search engine of, on Facebook. You find me there, and you see you, you you view my timeline. You see my work. You see the schools I visited. You see my my comments, my quotes. I have daily quotes I post. I have daily messages, empowerment and inspiring messages. You can also get inspired. You can also get empowered. You can also get motivated to discover yourself. Wow, thank you very much. We, we imagine that it has really sunk into the heads of uh, everybody who is listening there. Quite inspiring. Daniel, maybe a final word on, on this? Adi, he has said it all. And I'll just call on people out there to support him. As I said, if you want to contact him, you can go to his Facebook page, send him the message. Or better stay true or the numbers you find at the bottom of your screen. Yes, Adi, definitely. Wow, thank you very much, Ferdinand. The doors are always open to you. Thank you for being us tonight, being us tonight. Thank you so much for the privilege, Adi Divine, being wow. here. Daniel, thank you. Thank Dear you. to the viewers, it is here we draw a close to the today's edition of the program. Hoping that you take the rendezvous with us same time next week on the same channel with the same company of young people. And we promise you images, pictures, and all you wish for next time. Bye-bye. Stay blessed. Get a voice.